This time we went to a space where not much has changed in the last 30 years and one really gets the impression that one has fallen in a time loop into a period that has long since ended. For me, an extremely observable space. Try to guess where we are this time. We are in Bratislava and we have come to see one of the most iconic buildings in Central Europe, the Slovak Radio Building. This house met a similar fate to the Thermal Hotel in Carlo Viveri. That is, it was designed on the basis of an architectural competition in the late 1960s but its actual implementation took place many years later and the hotel opened in 1985. This is sometimes a problem for architecture. When you design it at a certain time, you react to a certain situation and the realization does not happen until many years later. And unfortunately, that is what happened here. Pretty much everyone knows this house and feels some need to define themselves. So there really is a relatively small group of people who love the house. And I'm hoping that in the future it might be a little bit higher. And then there's a lot of people who think it's not very good. And they look at it from afar and they say like, that weird house that's expanding up like that, it's not very interesting and it's kind of unkempt around. Well, not so much. I don't think it is and we're going to take a closer look at it today. Whenever some iconic shape is designed, something that attracts a huge amount of attention, it tends to overshadow everything in its immediate surroundings. So maybe it's not obvious at first glance that the house sits on a pretty big multi-story base that contains a lot of features and has this extensive rooftop terrace. If you look at an estate like the Barbican in central London, you'll see that those terraces that are raised from the surrounding ground are an extremely popular space. Because you're not in the hustle and bustle of the city, you've got a bit better view, there's a bit of a breeze, and you're in the shadow of something just beautiful and significant. And unfortunately, that's not the case here. Because the condition of it is pretty lousy, I think since it's been completed, it's basically just been steadily falling apart. And then the result is that you make it impossible for anyone to get in, you close some gates, you erase it from the public space, and after a while, people stop even knowing that it exists. And I think that's a terrible shame because there are reserves like that in the city that are not being used to their full potential. And they contribute to the fact that most people say it's a stupid house, that it was badly designed, that it's not very good to use, and yet maybe it's something a little different than the quality of the design. This whole huge colossus stands only on eight cross steel columns and has a reinforced concrete core in the middle. So this inverted pyramid only touches the ground in very small places. And although the house looks quite simple from the outside, when you go up to it, you'll find that there's an incredible number of different spaces around it, nooks and crannies, terraces with views, no views. So it's a very rich variety of places to go. This extremely unusual shape has one undeniable advantage, and that is that the house shades itself. So it's got a glass facade which gives a good view, and actually there's quite a lot of light inside, but it's not exposed to direct sunlight, or rather it's minimized. If you compare it to any office building today, it normally looks like an all-glass block for the sake of being able to see far away, but that means the sun beats down on it, and the air conditioning has to run full blast inside to even exist inside. Here it's solved by the architecture itself. We're in the lobby of the radio station and here are a few things that are really from the design era and I think they're totally cool. 
The seating and the light fixtures here, which correspond to each other in shape, really tend to tighten up this whole space for me. We're in recording studio number one, an incredibly beautiful expansive space that has top-notch acoustics. It's structurally separate from the rest of the building. It's all on springs, the walls are suspended, and there's an immaculately shaped wooden acoustic ceiling on top. And there's a huge organ. We're in recording studio number five, which is on the ground floor. It's the second largest, and it's one of the ones open to the public. Everything is unified here with one acoustic tiling and with this comfortable seating that we've seen throughout the building that really runs throughout the different areas. One of Courbusier's five famous principles for modern architecture was the flat roof, but it's a residential roof that you can get on. You're high above the ground, there's fresh air blowing, and you can look out over the city. And since then, wherever I go and see a big flat roof with this amazing situation, of course, I always think about the fact that it should be accessible, that it would be enough to have a cafe there, to fix the railings, to invest money in some kind of surface, to figure out some way to get there. And at that point, it's a fantastic value. I think a lot of institutions are saying that's not the main thing we should be doing. We're worrying about something else. And so it's reserves like this that aren't being used. And I think that's a terrible shame. If you had the opportunity to go into these places, you would see the city through a whole different set of eyes. Between the sixth and ninth floor, there is this open space over several floors. Here you'll find that it's two pyramids within itself. Between the outer shell and the inner shell, there's still a place like this where you can walk on individual catwalks. It's an incredibly interesting space. From the outside, the thing looks really simple and compact, but you step inside, and even though it's still the same shape, the richness of those spaces and those individual bays and atriums and exits from the offices create a completely observant light that I find quite nice to pass my time through. What I really like here is that there are minimized elements in the interior. There's one type of carpet, one anodized aluminum, one tile, and when there's a wooden handrail of some sort, it's really neat, so it doesn't get lost in this big space. And then there may be a lot of different little things, but it holds together these few basic decisions. Some things, if they really last 20, 30, 40 years, nothing is done about them, then they become super cool. So sometimes be careful when you throw some things away and you're like, yeah, that's out of style, that's not interesting, let's get rid of it. Maybe sometimes you just need to hold on a little bit. We are currently in a typical office space, namely Office 815. It's a space like this that has a tall glass facade. Those windows can't be opened, but you can see that the other plateau is out again a little bit and it really helps to screen that part of it.
A lot of buildings look remarkable, iconic from the outside, but when you go inside, you are disappointed. Examples are some skyscrapers where there's a small reception area downstairs and then just normal, normal floors. But that's not the case here. Here, from the outside, it's an observant shape, but inside, between the sixth and ninth floors, this cascading open space, various interconnections, walkways, the sun shines in here impeccably. So I'm absolutely thrilled here. It's extremely rich in space. There's a lot of elements and materials that have been here for over 30 years. Some of it's in pretty bad shape, but together it still has a very strong atmosphere. And I think it's cool that it didn't go through some major renovation in the early 90s that tended to completely destroy these spaces because a lot of people at the time thought these things weren't good. But today it might deserve a renovation again, but with respect for the original qualities. So one color carpet, respect for the materials, but some things really deserve a little bit of a makeover. But it's a job for somebody who admires it, appreciates it, thinks it's good, and can contribute to it as a kind of contemporary refined work. And in a lot of houses, both in Slovakia and in the Czech Republic, it would do a lot of good. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen much.